Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach and and the God. <laughs> yes, just yesterday I was gonna do a video about Kwanzaa and I said no, no, no because I read the comments and my last video on Kwanzaa people were just like stop giving this guy attention. Just, just, just ignore him. And so I almost did it because uh, uh, just some guy did a really funny uh, uh, video about Devil's Die number two. I reviewed Devil's Die number one actually did it twice because Kwanzaa put a malicious DMCA strike on me. Um, uh, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to listen to people. They don't want me to do another video. Uh, but then this happened. Um, people also said I'm overdoing the sad trumpet uh, sound effect, uh, which people used to love. So I'm going to chill on that. You got to listen to the fans. Those are the people who put money in your pocket. I was trying to come up with a, I'm trying to come up with a, uh, a slogan for Splato Comics. It's something like, well, no, it's the mission statement. So like 10, 15 years ago, all the corporations started doing mission statements and it was all kind of like flouncy, progressive, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like a, some megalithic corporation, but they're like, we are to expand fairness in the atmosphere, You're like whatever. Uh, so uh, my mission statement, I'm still working on it, and it would go something like, the goal of Splato Comics is to enrich myself by entertaining you consistently. Just working out the, the rhythms of that one. Um, but anyway, uh, so then, uh, uh, just some guy, and you can see from his videos, if you are one of his, I think he's got, okay, I'll just click on it. Uh, how many sub... Where's the sub count on? If, if you look at this on the phone, it says what the sub count is. I don't know what he's got. He's got like 40,000 subs. I remember back in the day when he had like 2,000, 5,000. So he's really, oh, it's going to be right here, right? 35,000. Uh, so if you see from the, uh, the views, He's really doing good. <laughs> Any Anything art related is always a dud, 3.7K. But if you see his other ones, uh, 13,000, 15,000, 17,000, 33,000, 14,000, 20,000, his, his stuff, views per video are outdoing mine. And I've, I'm coming up on 100,000 subs. It, sub count really doesn't matter. What really matters is the average views for your video. So he's beating me. That's great because he's freaking hilarious. Um, uh, so yesterday he does this, and I, I muted it, so I can start talking while it shows some of the art from Devil's Die number two. So yesterday he does this video, and it's one of the reasons I, I stopped reviewing uh, Kwanzaa stuff is number one, it's just it's not sold in any stores that I go to, and I travel all over the country. Number two, I'm just basically saying the same thing over and over again. He's privileged. He's smug. He's antagonistic toward the customers, and he's just very, very lazy. Um, he's just weirdly not interested in his own creations. He's got, you know, not to get that personal, as far as I can tell, he's got a normie job. So comics just seems to be a way for him to buy his way into Hollywood, which is kind of the thing now. Um, but uh, just some guy, he, um, we have some similarities. We both, you know, obviously really like comics. Uh, we both use humor uh, as uh, criticism. But uh, just some guy is is better, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you watch those movies where they have the androids. He's the more advanced model. He's not constantly saying stupid stuff that gets him in trouble. Um, and he, I don't know if he writes his stuff or if he edits, but he he's more focused than me. He's not talking about the soup he had for lunch that day. Um, by the way, again, this is all the actual art um, from uh, this book. So uh, one of the things I always do is, is, is I get down on myself. Um, not, don't worry, I'm, I'm not fishing for sympathy. But um, I remember uh, Quentin Tarantino used to always talk about this. He goes, once a year, I have a, a, a Quentin detest fest. And I just sit in my house or apartment and I just think about all the stupid stuff I did over the last year and all the stupid things I'm doing. And basically, he's saying he's, you know, trying to, trying to improve. So, um, uh, I, you know, I've said some dumb things, uh, not thinking about what I'm saying, uh, context is going to be removed and, you know, the level of 
maliciousness of my stalkers. So there was, uh, I used to always do stupid things and I would say, well, that was really stupid, but that's not like me. But you can only do stupid things for so long consistently to where you go, I think I might be dumb. <laughs> and if you notice me getting in a lot less trouble, uh, having more fun, being happier, and just things just going, generally going better, it's because I now go into things with the assumption that I'm kind of dumb and I need to look out for that. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, but just some guy is not dumb. He's very smart. He's very incisive. Uh, he's better at roasting than me. I, I would say our knowledge of comics, I'd probably say mine's better, but uh, he's better at, at staying on point and uh, just devastating. He's got one of those, when he, when he insults you, it's like, when my son roasts me, like you just feel sad and you want to go on a, on a, like this little placid lake and just skip stones and be sad. Oh, by the way, my buddy is out of town. He's visiting his kids and, uh, man, your kids will roast you down to your soul without even thinking about it. So he, he, uh, he used to lift weights a lot. Um, and now he's kind of got some health issues and then his, uh, his kids are, they're in that phase where they write songs. And uh, one of his son uh, wrote a song called, My Daddy Used to Have Tough Muscles. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're not coming back from that one. No, you're never gonna be the same after that one. So anyway, uh, just some guy does, you know, his uh, 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 roast review critique of, again, <laughs> again, this, this image, it's supposed to be a woman washing her hands. It looks like, the sequel to Metal Gear Solid called Metal Dick Solid. This is just embarrassing. Okay, so uh, then uh, what happened was uh, Kwanzaa responded. Now, one of the big things with me is um, uh, they do this real high school. It's funny he says Mean Girls because they do this thing. They either shun you or they shark attack you. Uh, you know, the example is uh, Jawbreakers Lost Souls. It had a great campaign. It made like 200 and thousand dollars and they completely ignored it cyber frog with his three campaigns for for the one book uh with three different covers uh i think he's made like seven hundred thousand there's almost no coverage of it all uh but then when they when they want to destroy you it, it just comes all at once so kwanzaa is kind of the opposite of me and ethan he gets nothing but glowing praise and he is highly connected uh, and he, he lives in a position of constant privilege. Uh, so when he does his Kickstarters, he will get glowing shill media coverage from dozens, dozens of websites and sometimes actual magazines. I think he had Entertainment Weekly recommend his uh, black Kickstarter. Um, but he's very, very fragile. And try, it's, I'm get, it's taken a long while to get here. My point is, just some guy, he's, he's been doing good for a while and he's blown up. He's not done the things that I did to get, you know, targeted. He hasn't made the mistakes. And yet, once you reach a certain level, if you don't get on the right side of history, which means get on the right side of leftist, extremist, progressive, shill media, you're targeted for destruction. We're going to see that. So uh, uh, I'm kind of a Kwanzologist. I've read, I don't know, a couple hundred tweets from him and I've probably read 10 or 12 of his books. So some people are saying, are you sure this is him? Because, you know, anyone can just take his picture. And I, I'm 100% positive this is him. So he responds and he goes, hey, Mean Girls 2, straight to video. You want to quote dunk, unquote on me? Stop being an anonymous little coward hiding behind videos and use your real name and illustrations to gasp, make your own comics. So this is, I feel like there's like, klaxons and bells going off. This is beyond ir irony squared. Um, so Kwanzaa is challenging just some guy the same way SJWs challenged me like a year and a half ago. And then we all know what happened. If just some guy who's a good artist um, decided to make his own comic, somebody, for example, Kwanzaa's boss, Mark Wade, uh, would step in uh, as he did with me. This is the exact same stuff they said to me. By the way, you don't have to make comics ever to be a, cri a critic of them. He goes, he goes, you're Comicsgate. 
why make all these videos about other people's work and not cash in yet? Well, he's, he is cashing in. He's, he's got a YouTube. It's monetized and he's, he gets really good views. Um, but he doesn't have to. And, and what's your point? Okay, let's see what he says. This comment alone will rile up your fellow impotents to rage donate several times over to any drivel you cook up. Okay, so this is a... This is like some deep lore. So one of the things people like Kwanzaa and Rich Johnson has done this in an article when he finally covered Jawbreakers is they will find, you know, a couple people who did buy multiple books. And then they will say that every single backer buys multiple books. So when I have 10,600 backers for Jawbreakers, that's really 2,500 people buying four books each. I hand fulfilled and shipped all of the uh the shipments for iron sights uh both the main campaign and then the charity campaign i think it was something like 33 3400 that it took me like two three months to do that and i remember one guy who ordered five a uh, couple people ordered two but 97 98 percent of people uh ordered one but this is one of those lies they tell you know one of the things what is that quote uh, you know, the, the secret to a lie is just keep telling it, you know, um, they'll repeat it over and over again. Not only do they use it to disparage success of their enemies, but excuse their incompetence. Um, uh, Kwanzaa is connected to all media and he has weaponized race in an egregious and uh, I consider disgusting fashion. He was literally using uh, people getting shot and killed to sell his white Kickstarter. Um, uh, so, moving on. Otherwise, you're just another thirsty hater, stepping up and fetching in your fake cult. So, uh, step and fetch is, that's, uh, that's him being racial with just some guy. Just some guy is black. Um, uh, there's a pretty, uh, he, he made a funny comment one time when, you know, the, the doxing and the swatting was uh, happening. Uh, because he's, 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 you know, covered his tracks quite well. He goes, uh, he goes, uh. Can I do an impersonation of him? I can't because I I drank water in the last 48 hours. Just some guy. H2O, look into it. What? His throat is always so dry. Let me, let me try this thing. He goes, I'm a black guy in Chicago. Good luck finding me. <laughs> so step and fetch, that's, that's a racial insult uh, from Kwanzaa to just some guy. One of the other problems Kwanzaa has with just some guy, I'm using theorizing, is that just some guy is not playing along with the script. Uh, Kwanzaa believes that black people are, are only allowed to be on his side, which is extremist, liberal, progressive, whatever. And if you are not, you're some sort of an Uncle Tom. Uh, so Step and Fetch is basically calling him an Uncle Tom. Uh, in your fake culture war for what? Patreon backers? So this is another thing. They all, uh, uh, SJWs always make making money as being malicious somehow uh <laughs> making money keeps an industry in business they always also do this thing where they do their kickstarters and me and ethan have shown it where they'll literally do this pie chart that like explains how they're not going to take any profit and they're very proud oh we take no profit that, that, that's that's how you kill an industry profit helps fund your next book it makes it so you can grow, the industry can grow. When you're not shooting for profit, when you're just shooting for internet clout and hoping some Hollywood nobody gives you three grand to option your book. By the way, option doesn't mean it's gonna make it. All it means is option means they have the right when they go to a meeting to pitch it along with the 20 other things they're pitching. Maybe you'll be less mad at everyone once you grow enough sack to make comics. You obviously know so much about them. He knows a lot about comics. I would say I know more, but he knows a lot. Um, and again, this is this is a fake challenge. Uh, Kwanzaa, SGWs, people connected to him, they will always cheat to win. We saw it when I produced a work that you know, people have gotten Jawbreaker's Lost Soul. They said this is you know to the quality of you know Marvel when it's good, DC most of the time. This is a mainstream quality comic. Um, uh, so Mark Wade, Kwanzaa's boss, these people all know each other. They don't form friendships, but they're very good at forming alliances. If you wonder why Mark Wade hired Kwanzaa, who sells terrible, we're talking 1,200, 1,100, 900, 
800 for his, you know, floppies, his monthly. Uh, I believe my theory is Mark Wade is trying to set Kwanzaa up for an easy win. Despite everything, Mark Wade, on his worst day, is still a very, very solid writer. On his best day, he's one of the best writers. So uh, by uh, co-writing with Kwanzaa, he's setting up Kwanzaa for um, some probably legitimately good reviews. Oh, this is actually pretty good, and Kwanzaa's name's on it, which will then be used to dispel all the other criticism as merely uh, uh, racism. Uh, the, uh, Kwanzaa always goes back to race, but Brian Adore Hill is black too, and everyone likes him. Christopher Priest is black, and everyone likes him. Dwayne McDuffie is black, and everyone liked him. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, Kevin Grivier. Is that how you say his name? Uh, everyone likes him. There are tons of black creators who no one ever has a problem with. We have a problem with Kwanzaa uh, because he's a really bad writer and he's awful with people. Um, so, uh, maybe you'll be less mad at everyone once you grow enough sack to make comics. You obviously know so much about them. Until then, get off these SJW nuts, Regina George. We're going to see some homophobic insults repeated by Kwanzaa today. Uh, I don't know who Regina George is. It's... it's Vaguely, I think it's, is it, is that the black woman who's like, she's conservative. So people like Kwanzaa always flip out that she exists. Like you're, you're not allowed to be anything other but liberal Democrat if you're black, according to people like Kwanzaa. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> uh, your obsession with me is what's embarrassing. So uh, just some guy responds. They're, they're basically just clapbacks. They're. They're like witty clapbacks, but they're just clapbacks. Um, a lot of people respond uh, because it's interesting because, like I said, the thing with Kwanzaa and people like him is they like high school style shunning. So hit, for him to respond is very interesting. Um, and then he has a couple of them. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, so, uh, oh, and the other thing is when he says, um, did, I miss, did, did he edit it? Okay, where is it? That's the middle. I swore on the first time he was he was talking about um Oh stop being an anonymous little coward, hiding behind videos and use your real name. Okay, so this is one of those things they, they do all the time. They're like, say your real name. What are they gonna do with just some guy's real name? They're gonna contact his place of employment. They're going to use his full name to reverse Voldemort him every single time they can with uh, baseless defamatory accusations, hoping to kill his future prospects for, you know, uh, getting a job. If he has a job that has security clearance, I have no idea what he does in real life. Um, uh, you know, uh, getting a, a, what do you call it? Getting an apartment. You know, anytime where you Google someone, oh, just some guy, uh, apparently he's some sort of racist bigot because 12 psychopaths on Twitter say so. Um, and then, of course, there's the doxing and the swatting. There, um, I'm not saying Kwanzaa is going to dox or swat anyway. He's way too lazy for that. Um, but people who orbit him, his allies, I'm pretty sure are the same people who do things like swat Peter Semetti. Um, so going to his uh, response. Clever response, anonymous obsessed coward. <laughs> <It's just> embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, I know you've got your audience here to maintain your pre uh, pretense of critique for because, quote, because you like comics, end quote. Odd. Can't find a review with a positive title about comics. Oh, wait. Jawbreaker's the review. Everything else is, quote, these damn SJWs. I wake up mad. All right. So later on, just some guy points out that you can literally just read the titles. He's, he's had numerous... Uh, uh, not just positive, but glowing reviews. I still remember walking down 11th Avenue at night with my earbuds in, listening to his review of uh, Kwanzaa's, no, excuse me, just some guy's um, video about My Hero Academia. And it was so good. And it was so emotional because he really conveyed what it meant to him uh, that I started getting choked up. Uh, just some guy absolutely loves comics. I think he loves manga more, but he does love comics. But um, 
it's it's just laziness. What these people always they they make theories based on ignoring everything that does not bolster their theories. Real, fair, and balanced. Oh gosh, you're so old. Jeez. So fair and balanced was I don't know if it's still the slogan of Fox News, but it was like 20 years ago. So way back in the day, like in the John Stewart Daily Show, and like any time an SJW would get bothered, they'd be like, or they'd be like, fair and balanced, huh? It's it's oh god, it's such an old reference. Oh, that's not fair. You like Jamal's art, right? Is it because he never called you a clown on Twitter? God, stop it, jeez. He likes Jamal's art because Jamal's art is good and it's actually jumped up in quality recently. Your writing has never been good and I, I, I wouldn't say it's gotten worse. It's, it's always been the same. One of the things about SJWs is they know they get their books not on merit, talent, or sales. So they never have any incentive to change. Kwanzaa can always claim any criticism of himself is simply racism and he will do it over and over and over again. And the shill, corrupt, biased, criminal, in my opinion, media will always bolster this clown and his delusions. Um, didn't spurn your feelings? Anyway, you got a little notice for these love letters to me. I'm sure your weird fetish. So again, he's getting like weirdly homophobic uh, towards just some guy. Um, I'm sure your weird photo fetish will misinterpret how out of the thousands of comics you regularly focus on little old me. So first of all, there aren't thousands. I mean, there are thousands per year, but a monthly there's about 400, 400, sometimes 500, but that includes reprints and um, old extras that Diamond is getting rid of for a cut rate. Um, but the reason he's made, how many videos has he made? I always forget. There's like a way, but he uh, he does like, I'm going to estimate he's done 300, 400 videos. And I'm a big fan of his, so I'm going to estimate he's done 10 on Kwanzaa. And the reason he focuses on Kwanzaa is because Kwanzaa is very symbolic of the problems right now. As you can see, he's extremely arrogant with nothing to back that up. He has no talent. He has no sales. I, I've mentioned this in other videos before. Uh, one time when I was in the Marines, I got put onto this thing called MSPF, Maritime Special Purpose Force. It sounds a lot cooler than it is. Well, at least for, I, we were just perimeter security, but the people we worked with was uh, Force Recon. Force Recon is basically the Navy SEALs of the Marine Corps. Um, and, you know, we were very much in awe of them, uh, but, you know, I'm also kind of, you know, a little scared. I mean, like, these guys, I mean, they're just insanely tough. Um, but what we found is, Almost to a man, they were incredibly humble and polite. Because when you work at that high of a level, you're constantly aware of how easy it is to fall, how much you rely on a lot of different factors, which is, you know, your teammates and, and you know, some just genetics. You know, some people just have better knees and better backs than other people do. Um, and, uh, they're very, very humble. I remember, you know, there was this, there was this thing in this hierarchy that you have boots. So there's people who recently got out of boot camp, and then you have senior Marines, which are people who graduated from boot camp a whopping two years ago. And so the senior Marines never want to do boot stuff, you know, like clean toilets, you know, scrub the catwalk. Uh, we would rotate uh, duties, you know, oh, you know, you know, uh, golf company, you guys do this, and then when recon did it. So when we would have to clean a bathroom, and these are giant bathrooms, you know, 50 stalls, it would take like half a day. Recon would knock it out in 20 minutes. You know how? Every single person would join in. Sergeant Major, Captain, freaking the Major would be in there if there was a Major on site. I usually it's have a Captain. But you know, Captain, Sergeant Major, all these high ranks. Scrubbing toilets. Some of these guys are like 38, 39, 40 years old. They're on their like fifth marriage. Toughest guys in the world. Scrubbing toilets. Why? Because when everyone does it, you get it done quickly. Um, what I'm saying is great people have humility and um, incompetent clowns have arrogance. Um, so, uh, no reason, none at all. Zip, nada. You just, quote, love unquote comics not me 
third weird homophobic attack? Um, can't imagine each of these next videos singularly devoted to every single issue, every, each panel, each word. But you're not obsessed. Critique. Well, that's that's how you critique. No, no. I I when I do critique his books, I only show five pages because he put a malicious DMC request against me, not to protect his copyright, but it was literally just retaliation for criticism. One of my points earlier is, uh, you know, I'm going through a lawsuit, so I had to go through old emails and kind of refresh my memory. Um, not to not to humble brag, but. I got really big really quickly. Just some guys had a slow burn because he, he has a regular job, so he does like one or two videos a week. So he's had a slow burn over the last year or so. I blew up like within month two. And as soon as I hit like a certain amount, as, as soon as I could consistently get like 5,000 views, I was targeted for absolute destruction because people like Kwanzaa cannot handle any type of actual criticism. They bathe in privilege. They bathe in adulation from a shill media who looks only at Kwanzaa's skin color and says, we have to say it's good or our fellow allies will attack us and say we're racist. And so what I'm saying is they will look for anyone with a certain level, a certain audience and a, a certain quality and depth of criticism and they will target them for dest destruction. Uh, just some guy gets a little salty every now and then. Nothing like how I was in 2017 but he's incisive and he's correct and that drives people like Kwanzaa absolutely insane so I think there's one more uh, so yeah so just some guy just points out that uh, you know you only have to go a couple back to see it literally has best comic of the year in the title um, oh geez this, wow okay so I think this is the last one did I write, quote, reviews, unquote, or, quote, titles, unquote? I don't have time to watch you be a sourpuss. <laughs> sourpuss? Your conjectural critiques are full of your personal feelings towards me. If you can't review something without using pejorative terms towards the work and creators, it's just hating. Be a better reviewer. You know, object. Uh, you want people to be objective. You literally have the direct emails of a shill media who gives nothing but biased, subjective propaganda. And you're going to lecture just some guy who occasionally gets a little salty with you because you get salty with him. And you're going to say, be objective. Tell your shill media cronies to be objective. Freaking clown. Everything you say is dripping with your personal and political views. Um, well, no, actually, no. You have to be objective for journalism, at least actual journalism. You should, you can have object, personal and political views in a critique. Um, I don't need your positive feedback. Many more people than you have critiqued my books with positive and negative remarks. Sans your comics gate, alt-right tap dance. So alt-right is just a non-actionable, which means you can't sue someone, a uh, chicken shit way of calling someone a Nazi or white supremacist. Or, and you might say, well, just some guy's black. Insane SJWs now call black people white supremacists and white nationalists. It's They just throw it at the wall and see what sticks. Like most comics, Gate, you confuse your barbs as have, as my having thin skin. Oh. You don't have thin skin. You got almost no skin at all. You have a thin membrane above muscle tissue and, and nerves and arteries. You could not be thinner skin and yet here you are trying to validate your videos against my claims that they're just sour grapes <laughs> why does kwanzaa talk like he grew up in the 1920s um ironic it's not weird to call out your obsession be honest for someone who quote loves qu comics unquote you have a lot to choose from but you'd rather talk about quote kwanzaa puts his name on this Fake holiday, melanin deficient, and milestone wooden because you stalk me. Okay, so he's referring, he's literally saying, I don't watch your videos, and he's talking about direct quotes from the videos. I mean, even in the video from last night, uh, at the end, uh, uh, just some guy in his parched drink some water. Water. Um, 
is uh, he, he's he at the end he goes Kwanzer, I know you're watching, and I was and at first I go yeah Kwanzer's not watching, and then like a second later I go maybe he's watching, and then a second later I go yeah he's definitely watching. So he he does watch, and then he does this little high school thing. He's like, I don't watch your videos or whatever. By the way, I, I've been telling Ethan he needs to hire an intern and to just do a a master list, do one of those compilation videos of every single time some SJW obsessed with him has pretended to not know the name of his book. I, I swear it's in the hundreds, like five, six hundred. Um, because you stalk me and think that's going to upset me enough to pay attention to you. Like a child acting out. They're so condescending. So, Kwanzaa is a guy who, who started the industry literally making copies. Uh, he was an editor of Zuda, which everyone forgot about. And then he's basically decided, he, he's, like, he's, he saw himself in a reflection. He goes, oh, apparently I'm African-American. And then he just weaponizes race very embarrassingly uh, to... Uh, sell to make incredibly low selling books um oh what happened ah lost my your statements aren't critiquing comics they're personal you can't hide it the way you anonymously obsessively and cowardly hide behind this persona okay it's the internet People use names because it's fun and also because psychos are going to cyberstalk you and try to swatch you or get you fired. It's not, it's smart to not give away your name and fate. Also, this isn't, a, this isn't, he's never any, like, one of the things when you're like, oh, you know, he's basically doing the say it to my face. But the say it to my face is when you say something so incendiary, it's like you would never say that to my face. Just some guy just says like kind of like light roasts and just regular critiques. It doesn't even fit. Um, so that's why I'm responding because I think you're a fraud. Dude, you you have shill media say that you're a best-selling author and your stuff sells 800. Well, I mean, technically 400th best is still best, but I, I've literally done several videos where I've Showing the entire Comic Con monthly list, and Quanzer's books are sometimes five or six from the bottom. Um, uh, it's like when they say uh, someone's number one at being number two. <laughs> He's the best at being the worst. Um, uh, As I've said to you from jump, you show a lot of ability that you waste on being a stooge for Comics Gate to prove you're not part of a Person of color, monolith. Okay, that's just ugly and, and gross. Uh, there is not a person of color monolith. People of color, government name, people, um, have all sorts of different beliefs. People like Kwanzaa want to own black people. That's ironic. And punish anyone who leaves the, let's just say ranch, okay? Um, and that's why we're, we're seeing some extreme invective. That's why he's decloaking. That's why he's not using the shunning technique on just some guy because just some guy is black. And as a black person, just some guy is expected to be on the right side of history, which is extremist leftist propaganda. Um, instead of trying to foster some false superiority over me, go create positivity in the medium you claim to love. It's, okay. Shut the hell up, Kwanzer. I, I gotta mentally edit myself on some stuff because I'm in a lawsuit, but this is not a sincere challenge. If just some guy were to create a comic, and I believe it actually would be good, he's shown, he's shown the way he critiques, I think he would be a good writer. And I think he actually has written a little bit. And I've seen his art, his art is good. If he made a comic, I, I believe it would be good. And I guarantee y'all would pull the tortious interference, defamation, mean girl shunning technique on him because you guys cannot handle a level playing field. You can't handle equal criticism. As I was saying, just as, as just some guy is getting targeted because he's elevated himself. As soon as I hit 
a certain point, before I said any of the dumb stuff I said in 2017, I was targeted because they can't handle criticism. They want to live forever in their land of privilege, their petty world of privilege, where their media cronies constantly lie and say their horrible books are good, their low-selling books are bestsellers, and they want to continue in this world forever. It's basically a kind of a matrix. You know, uh, you know it's, it's, you know, playing a tea party. Uh, you ruin it if you point out that there's no actual tea in the cups. And you point out that, oh, this is all fake. This is all pretend. But you have to commit to the bit. The problem is, you know, basically, people like just some guy and me, everyone, Doug Ernst, Captain Cummings, all, all the people over the last two years, we, we, we break their little tea party, you know, their emperor's new clothes routine, all of that. We basically point out their flaws and they can't handle it because they got a lot of them. And having a lot of flaws is fine. The problem is they're absolutely unwilling to work on their flaws and deficiencies at all. All they will do is what they've always done. Cheat to win, defamation, tortious interference, using media connections over and over again. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thanks to everyone giving the GoFundMe in the Indiegogo. Because of Kwanzaa, blame Kwanzaa. I was going to go see uh, Shazam today, but I got two more comics. So I'll be doing one tonight, one tomorrow morning, comic shop time. So I will see Shazam, but it's gotten pushed later in the week. I'm trying to have last week's comics done and then go to comics on shop on new comic book day and then have new comic book reviews on new comic book day not constantly getting behind. i'm also trying to limit myself to seven or less uh because uh comics are so terrible right now anyway thanks for watching bye